Hello FlossTube, it's me, Michelle, the Chinook Crafter here and on Instagram. And welcome back to episode number five. I am so happy that you guys are either coming back in or just found me and are checking me out. I really appreciate everyone that takes the time to watch. Um, this might be a little bit chaotic. I can see my two cats. One's right there, one is right there. And then of course, my baby. She is three months old and we are going through it. <laughs> so. If you didn't catch the, that, I am um, maybe a bit chaotic, chaotic today, but that's okay. We are here and we are making the best time we have because if it was not today, it would be probably sometime next week. Um, so this is mainly my channel. I mostly talk about cross stitch. I do talk a little bit about quilting and a lot about books as well, but that part's at the end so you can cut that off if you're just not interested in that. I will say that this episode is going to be light on the cross stitch. It'll be mainly about haul and plan because it's been an interesting two weeks the last half of April. And I'm hoping she falls asleep. I just wear a tight timeline as, as, as may have gathered. Um, so yeah, it's been, I did not get a lot of stitching done this week. Um, my my uh, older toddler, she is going through some teething right now. And so her sleep has gone to hell and we are all just going through it and my partner has gone back to work so I have not had as much free time as I've previously enjoyed but that's okay you know it, it is what it is we're finding out our rhythm and routine and it's fun that said I did I do, I do want to start off with my three fully finished objects I'm just sorry I'm just covering up the name because one's a baby gift so ha ah, look at that look at this I finished things I'll just talk quickly about all three of these and then move on. So this right here is called Potting Shed. It's by Pigeon Coop Designs, who is a Canadian designer. And this was my second or third cross stitch ever. And it has just been sitting as a lonely square for the longest time. And I use this as my demo to learn how to hoop finish. So you can kind of see from the back, blanket stitch, whip stitch isn't as pretty as it could be. It's a little puckered, but it was a learning experience and it's done. That is my biggest thing. It is done. No, you're not gonna look at the back. You're gonna look at the front, not the back, the front. Yeah, so that's exciting. Um, he no longer carries this pattern. He revamped it. It's now called Potting Bench, and it's really similar. Like, this sunflower is gone, this bird changed color, and these two things kind of swap places. So it's, a very, it's still a very similar pattern. He just reworked it, because this is an old pattern I bought as a kit and then didn't do anything with it for like two years. But it's finished. I'm so proud of myself for finishing that. Um, my other finish is Autumn Owl, also by Pigeon Coop Designs. I started this December 2022. Yeah, and I finished it, and I finished it pretty fast. I I don't really keep track of dates or things. It's not something that matters to me. I'm slow. I take my time. So I know for some people that you know they're like, oh, I took a week to do this, and I don't know, I just don't keep track of that. It's not usually relevant to me. I'm trying to be better about it because I know it is interesting to some people, but it doesn't interest me, so I don't keep track. Um, so yeah, this was just a kit, so everything in it was like, you know, called for a DMC, called for Ida, like I didn't do that. And I had this hoop, which is really interesting because it's rubber. It's a very interesting tension. But yeah, I love it. I think it looks so cute. And then the last one, I know I showed this before at the beginning of my Flostagram, I guess you'll, my Instagram one. Um, Journey, I'm just going to cover up the name because this is a baby shower gift. Um, yeah, so it is, I don't know, not doing a very good job covering that up. Uh, so it is, was in the May 2021 Cross Stitcher Magazines by Jane Jones. I think that she just called it Hello Little One. So it'll probably be on her Etsy shop fairly soon. I think they have like a year exclusive. And it's just the sweetest little bunny. I had a piece of scrap Ida that was like the perfect size, I think 14 count. It was my first attempt at back stitching, and it turned out so beautiful. Like, and I love how I love how this looks. Like, I think I'm just gonna really try and zoom in. I don't have a viewfinder, so I have no idea what I'm showing. Um, so yeah, uh, this baby, uh, this baby girl, is seven weeks, eight weeks older than this one right here. It's from my two of my best friends from high school, and it was fantastic because like they were pregnant, and we're, you know we we're like, oh ha ha, like too bad, you know, too bad I'm not pregnant, you know, Your kids could be good, the same age, and then. I found it like two weeks later that I was pregnant, so hey! So we got two little girls and they're gonna be best friends. They're gonna be best friends. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see right now they're babies, you know. <laughs> so yeah, so those are my f finishes. 
And I just, I had it done for the baby when the baby was born. I just haven't gifted it yet because they, um, they're house hunting right now, our housing economy, rough. So they don't have a nursery, so I was just kind of holding on to it until I finished it because they knew about it, they loved it, they had no place to display it, so I wasn't in a huge rush, but now I am. So yeah, I have three fully finished objects. And I have two more finished objects that I need to fully finish. They'll just be like wall hanging, so uh, the sewing machine, me and my sewing machine. We'll get there. We will get there. I have some... I'll talk about my sewing machine later. Uh, I didn't do much actual stitching this week. Uh, last two weeks. Two and a half weeks. Um, I tend... I did do, like, I did actually do a lot of stitching. I just really focused on one project mainly. And that is... Let me just try and get this. I had this folded and then when I tugged it over. <laughs> that is my natural... The Natural World Stitch Along uh, by Pixie Pixel Cross Stitch. And look at that, huh. I, um, I think I was, I was done like this January section in the last one, but then I managed to fully finish February and I've made a pretty good start on March with the border because it's the border that takes the most time. <laughs> Trying to hold the baby head up here and hold a piece. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a complicated. So yeah, and I just got really into stitching that. I had made a list of goals of what I wanted to do and I want to catch up on my stitch alongs and this one only has um you know I'm using the Selkie Petite Blendables in Pine Palette and so I don't have to switch colors or anything just add new thread as needed so uh, it was really easy to just focus on and go 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 and pick up put down you know no color changes no checking off where I was which has been handy because like I mentioned the last two weeks have been a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> And in my lovely project bag from Heidi's Handmade, I have my Peter Rabbit one. I worked on this most of Easter and yeah, I had it nicely folded. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So you can see I got his jacket done and most of his body, like this little bit down here is an egg. An egg and then obviously his head will be up here and then there's like some chicks. And yeah, I just really worked on that. It's like beautiful, beautiful shading on this pattern. It is in one of the World of Cross Stitching magazines. It's the cover image, so I can't actually remember which issue it is. And yeah, so I thought that was really sweet. It was kind of like a little Easter themed um, stitch. And that's what I did mainly when I was at my parents for Easter was work on this. And my aunt and uncle were visiting, so that was also really nice. I'll catch up with them, show off the new baby. And yeah, and that's what I'm working on. It's a smaller stitch. Like, actually, I think that's actually the bulk of the stitching is his body and his head. And so I'm going to work on that still. Um, I was kind of doing also as like part of um, the novel Stitcher's Best Bunny Stitch Along. She has finished hers, but, you know, she said to keep using the hashtag and it's cute. And I thought that was a cute idea because, you know, I, li I like theme stitch alongs like that where it's like pick this theme and stitch this because it encourages me to stretch my my um, choices on like what I would pick, normally pick to stitch on. Um, I'm also working on the flowers or showers, no showers or flowers stitch along with uh, Bridges Get Stitches and Cross Stitch Joe. I just didn't do any stitching on it on that since I last showed it so I'm not showing it but they are hosting that which is like an April and May one so it is going to be showing up in my May plans. And the last one I worked on I had to is this. This is the Heart Sampler by Big Bad Vi Big Bad Vibes. Yes, and it's a heart sampler. And so we are doing it as a stitch along called the with the hashtag Big Bad Heart Stitch Along. Uh, it's me, Megan from the Long Distance Stitchers, and I know Maruni is also working on it. Marion from Maruni Crafts. And yeah, it's just beautiful. It's um, got the five shades, and there's going to be a rib cage right in here that I'm excited to get to. I it's a rib cage in a sampler. Like that is so fun, and it's so bold, and I like that. And it's going to be look really nice next to my love bow stitch longs one when I'm done that one. So that is the stitching and the finish. Like I said, I didn't do too too much. Um, it was kind of like I said an adjustment phase, but we're coming through the end. You know, we've adjusted. We're coming through it. So I'll get back into more of a regular schedule, which I'll kind of talk about with um mania. I don't know if I should do Mania first or talk about Hall first because they're kind of interconnected. I'll talk about Hall first. I'll talk about Hall. I 
Um, my first thing is I got two new project bags from Heidi's Handmade Bags. Well, Heidi's Handmade. She's also a floss tuber. And I actually have this fabric in my stash. And I was thinking about making it as a project bag. And then I saw it and I was like, fine, I don't have to make my own project bag. Somebody else did the zipper for me because I'm scared about zippers still and vinyl. So it's really cute. And again, she gave scissors and little floss drops. And then I got this mushroom and moth themed one because I have an aesthetic and she had two beautiful bags in that theme for me. So I've got nothing in them yet because I just want to show them off as they were first. And, but I definitely will be sticking them in because I like the project bags for storing. So that was the project bags. Uh, the other thing, and so this is going to be a little noisy, I have to pull them out because I want to keep the bag there. I was on a road trip with my, well not road trip, I was visiting my parents and the one day me and my mom decided we were going to go driving around because the weather's starting to turn nice and we love to check out garage sales and things like that. And my mom has fantastic luck at finding amazing garage sales. Like the stuff we got last summer was amazing. Like she found this like lady getting rid of all her cross stitch stuff. So I had like tons and tons of fabric, which I'm still like going through. So I found this shop, um, it was called Simply Stitches and Curiosities. It's in Nanton, which is a small town in Alberta. Um, it's right across the street from the candy shop. So fantastic, you know, like, I know I'm gonna be stopping there a lot. And it's not like a full on local needlework shop. Like, you know, it like, doesn't have any DMC. She only had like, but like there's some kits. There was some, you know, some of the tubes of the Charles Craft. There was um, so, some of the books. Uh, she has like a bunch of like applique and like um, wool applique and felting and like, like a bunch of different crafts. And I know she hosts some drop-in nights and craft nights, which I thought was really cool. What got me is she had this huge display of Aldani threads and sulky, the sulky, the sulky petites. Uh, I have not been able to find those in Calgary at all, like the, um, the sulky petites. I was looking, I was checking like the quilting and sewing shops, nothing. And so I got this beautiful, beautiful little haul. I already posted about it on Instagram, so I won't go, because, you know, obviously, duh, and duh. And so I don't have, like, specific plans. She didn't actually have the colors I wanted for the ones I knew I wanted, um, but she's ordering them in for me, so I will be able to pick those up in a couple weeks. And these ones, I just, I just, basically, I just picked the ones I thought were pretty, um, for, like, monochromatic samplers and such. Because uh, I know Broomsticks and Bobbins has some beautiful ones like I was looking at doing. And there's a, a tarot card spread I was kind of thinking for my mom as a gift that would be nice. And so I was, you know, grabbing those. And so I'm excited. And I, cause I got the one and tracked the one down for the natural world sample. It was a pain in the butt to get. So now I have like these nice little spools and like the spool storage, uh, the variegation, the price point. So I'm very excited to work on those. Um, one of the reasons I was didn't get as much done, my brother-in-law, he recently moved to Los Angeles and uh, he was back in town for like um, a weekend. He had some paperwork and things to deal with. So uh, knowing that he was coming, I shipped stuff to his house so I didn't have to pay the ridiculous shipping fees to Canada. And I was excited. I had to, I had to keep it kind of chill because, you know, I didn't want him to know how cuckoo I was. I am planning on next visit probably shipping one of those DMC cone Combs a 310 to his house, and because you know he just flies carried on, so I don't want to go excessive. But that, that's only like yay big, right? So that should fit in a carry on. Okay, sorry. She she likes to sleep with her head hanging, and it's kind of a thing. Okay, <laughs> we're just gonna work with that. Okay, if I shift. So the first bit I got was from Fabric Flare. They do like the printed. And this is the Creationist Blue, and I got an 18 count, so you can see like the one side is blank, and then the other side is printed with this beautiful night sky galaxy print. It's gorgeous, and it's huge, and I love it. Um, I got this because Need a Lot Designs released a mother bear and like baby bear, like Ursa Major, Ursa Minor pattern, um, and they used this fabric. So I have to pick which corner I think is the best. It's pro probably this corner over right here. And I'm going to be stitching that. Um, that is going to be something I stitch in May. Uh, I will probably talk more about that when the pattern's done. Just like why I picked that pattern and everything. Just once I can like show everything. Uh, so yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Oh, there's like a thing. I don't, there's like a, almost like some glitter and I didn't order like opalescent. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, this is cool, like printed, printed and everything. 
and yeah, and it looks her pattern looks fantastic on the printed fabric, and yeah, it's got back in this corner. This corner is gorgeous. So yeah, that is one. I also ordered from Under the Sea Fabrics, so if you know, you know. I got uh, the Gilded Oak and the Bewitched. I'm not opening them because they're nicely in this fabric, and I, I know they're huge, and I don't want to deal with folding that back up. It is for the Dark Queen of the Sea and the Dark Queen of the Earth. I know the Dark Queen of the Earth is a current stitch along. Um, so my birthday is May 16th, and that is going to be my birthday start. Um, you know, Dark Queen of the Earth. I'm an Earth, you know, Earth sign. Seems nice. Um, and I'll just stitch at my own pace. I also got the, the bead packs and things too. And yeah, I've never beaded before, so that will be a fun, interesting challenge when I get there. This is the C one, and embell the embellishment pack. And yeah, oh god, that's gorgeous. It's gonna be, you know, this is my first time stitching anything with it. I know that I wanna do some Mirabilas and Bella Filipina, so this is kind of like a, a gateway fancy lady, I guess. Yeah. All right, so that is the American haul, because uh, I got to skip all the shipping and possible imports and custom fees. I've got a bit of an embarrassing confession. Um, <laughs> I did not realize that traditional stitches, well, one of those needle shop, needle workshops, was about 15 minutes away from where I live. I, I did not know. Uh, when I first got into cross stitch, it was really got into it. It was like the end of 2021, and so I was just and like I had this, I was mostly buying kits, and so I wasn't buying things. Um, and then I wanted to check out some local needle work workshops. It was like still like COVID protocols and things, so I. I looked at them and we ended up going to one in Cochrane, which is like half an hour, 45 minute drive away. And I managed to conflate that shop, the Stitching Corner, also a great shop, with traditional stitches. So I thought that traditional stitches was, you know, about 45 minutes away from me. <laughs> it's up the road. It is basically up the road. Because uh, <laughs> I live on the outskirts of Calgary and like they live like, it's like an acreage outside of Calgary. 15 minutes I found out because my partner was driving around on his motorcycle and he found like a Buddhist temple so he was showing me on the map and then I was like looking on the map and I was like why is this saying traditional stitches? Well that's in Cochrane. No, up the road. So that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> so I went for the first time. Oh god, it's beautiful. I got, I was really excited. They have a cat, there's a cat that like, like not in the shop, like you're not getting cat hair on your stuff or anything like that, but it's like on the property. So we were pulling up to park and he was so friendly. That cat was so friendly and so in love. Um, spent a lot of time setting himself on our Honda instead of, you know, while I was shopping. Um, uh, probably because he smelled the chicken nuggets we had for the toddler, so, you know, I could actually shop within a time frame. And also, I want to apologize to Nancy from Vancouver Island. I had, uh, parked my butt down on the ground because I was, like, going through the lower racks of fabric, and she was so friendly, and then she asked if I had a floss tube, and I do, but I'm so awkward, and I was like, ah, yes, ooh, yeah, I do, like, Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> I was. In, I didn't know how to deal with that. I guess no one ever asked me before, like in, in real life, you know. So I was like, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I do. I like somebody in real life talking to me about stitching. Uh, oh god, it's okay. I got past it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, but she was really friendly. She was visiting from Vancouver Island, so she'd specifically need to stop here because. It's a beautiful, beautiful, jam-packed store. Like, I wish I had more time, but, you know, working around nap times and cranky pants. So, I got four pieces of fabric for different stitch-alongs. I'm just gonna start with what I got first. So I got, this is Gothic. Uh, picture this plus, and I got it as a 28 count uh, Cashel linen. And I'm going to be using this for the cabinet, the Morbid Curiosities, Cabinet Curiosities from Stitch Crick, which starts May 1st. It's a, yeah, it's got some interesting, it's very bluey purple. It wasn't the number one choice on my list when I was looking for it, but it was the one I found, and so that is the one I went with. So that is the first one I got. I got Valor, uh, also a 28 count, a uh, casual linen from Picture This Plus. This is going to be for the Lola and Crow Greenhouse of Oddities. I like the, you know, subtle mod modeling light. You know, yes, I think this will be nice because this will be really nice for that one. I just, I haven't started yet. I was waiting to get do fabric and I was going to order online and then I realized this was closed. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to make a shop and see in person because then I don't have to order online. 
I got, um, this is a 32, 32? Yeah, 32 count pearl gray is what I got Lugana. I got this for Ingleside Imaginarium's Story Steeds Stitch Mall. It's already started, like, they're... The frame and two releases have already been released, and May 1st will be like the third one. It's like a little carousel of like fantastical horses. I meant to start that one much earlier. I was just kind of waiting till I had. I like to buy a few pieces of fabric at once because I usually am buying online and shipping it or having to go to the south to pick it up. So I was. I like to have like a, a couple things on my list before I go because it's just most economical for my time and money. So I picked that one up because I was there. And then this is not that exciting. This is, uh, what count did I get? 14 count vintage country mo mocha from Zweigart. Owl Force Embroidery announced a free Treasure Island stitch along. I love me a literary themed stitch along. So I picked that up and we'll be trying to keep that up. Um, so that is a lot of new starts for the month of May. Um, which kind of brings me into my plans. I want to do Stitch Mania. I I know my last video I was like, I'm so stressed, I have too many whips, Ugh. and I'm like, I want to start all the things, and it's just the, I need the dopamine, it's been stressful, it's been a little bit stressful, May is my birthday month, so I'm gifting myself new starts and working on the things I'm excited about, and um, I'm not going to do like 31 starts or anything like that, that's, no, no thank you, <laughs> I don't want that, I want to have finishes too, so my plan is, well, I talked about this on my Instagram, so I'll start, the, start with that. I have 17 patterns by Mama Witch Cross Stitch. She's fantastic. I think everyone's seen her Possum song, and yes, I own that one. And she's got some, I have 17. I've got more on my wish list on Etsy. And she's got some free ones floating around on her Instagram and Facebook group. So, I mean, so it's technically more than 17. So I want to start working on those. I love her aesthetic. I love her vibe so much. So I want to get working on that. So... I've decided to do a Mama Witch Mondays starting May 1st, which is a Monday. So that is just going to be a day I designate to working on those patterns. So that is like my first one, and I'll do five new starts for that. And I say five new starts, but I have a couple that are like on the smaller side, like less than 100 by 100 stitches. So I think those ones will go fairly fast. So then I will have 17 patterns, and I will be moving along with that. So that's my first plan. So that's five days of May. I've already talked about May 16th. I'm going to start the Dark Queen of Earth. May 12th is the um, Treasure Island, and I've talked about the three stitch alongs, and then I'm in two stitch alongs. So my plan was I was going to, um, with the remaining days of May, and I was going to alternate between working on something I already have and starting something new. So I, you know, so I would get progress on my works in progress, but then also have some new starts. And then I would bring it to June, and I don't think I'll have a finish parade, but I will do like a mid-year whip parade, you know, just to showcase everything new that I've started and excited about. And, you know, it's just so many stitch along, so, and I love them. I love the, I love the excitement and the modifications and like the, this is my fabric, and oh, like for the, um, the library, for the cabinet curiosities, I was really trying to find maybe something like acid green, acid purple, acid pink. Because the Victorians loved their acid colors, like the neons. They they had terrible, terrible color choices. Terribly fantastic color choices. I just, the only one I was finding was something called Kermit, which was a very bright green. And I was like, mm, I'm just not feeling the vibe as much as, as I thought in my head. So I went with the, mis the gothic. So yeah, that is kind of my mania plans. Like, just to alternate between works in progress and starts. I'm going to use the wheel of random again rather than trying to schedule it just because that, that makes it a little bit more fun for me. Like, because I'll have the schedule for Mondays and my birthday and then everything else will just be a kind of random. Like I'll alternate between a new start and uh, a work in progress and we'll, I'll have a mid-May update on how that's going. And then yeah, at the end of May and beginning of June I will do a work, a work parade and you can see everything I've started, and um, I'm, I've got some smaller ones. I think if I really pushed in, like, I could get finished, so we'll see how that goes. So that is it for the cross-stitch talk. Thank you for everyone that's listened to the ramblings. I'm going to quickly do a quick little quilt talk and then move into my books. The quilt talk will be, like, two minutes, so that that's what's happening next. Hi. Uh, I'm just recording this real quick so I can insert it into where appropriate into the video so I just don't have to reshoot or refilm or anything. Um, 
Um, further thought, I don't want to be using Stitch Mania or Mania for what I'm doing in May. Uh, somebody on Instagram rightfully called out that it was maybe not the most sensitive and appropriate term considering um, the somewhat negative connotations or trivialization of people with mental health. Uh, I'm ashamed that I did not think that myself or realize and I mean not everyone thinks thinks about that way which I totally get but for me I want to be as safe and open a space as possible so I will not be calling it stitch mania or mania. I'm going to leave what I said up just as a record of what I've said just you know and um, I'm just gonna be having starts and fun in May because it is my birthday month and I will call it stitch mayhem because that is not going to be um, reflecting on appropriating a term for mental health and making it either way. Um, there, there's going to be a whole discourse there, and this is just what I decide I am comfortable with. Okay, thanks. Back to the back to the program. <laughs> so as I've mentioned in my last one and on Instagram, I'm doing the Starling Sew Along, hosted by Susie Quilts for her new um, quilt. Um, it's been a rough time. I um two weeks behind at this point, I was fighting with my sewing machine. I think I finally figured it out, like tension and settings and things like that, because I'm trying to learn a new skill on a machine that's new to me, so that's, should've done one or the other, but hey, it is what happens. So, and I was talking to Bridget, the museum stitcher, like talking like a couple comments here and there, just like how, hey, like I really wish like there was like quilt tube, the way there is like, you know, floss tube, you know, where like, oh, hey, I'm excited about this pattern. Oh, hey, I'm excited about this fabric line, you know? And there really isn't. Like, there's tons of tutorials which are really helpful and useful and interesting, but there's just no friendly little chit-chats, which I'm trying to incorporate a little bit more. I asked after saying that, then she said that she had, like, a little quilt talk on hers, but she's designed her own pattern for Taylor Swift, the Hours Tour. That is so cool. Like, I'm impressed by that. I'm so impressed. And then I found Lala D Stitches, who like, is new to me, like she's not new to everyone else, but she's new to me, and she has something she calls the Quilting Bee, and I'm only halfway through that episode because, you know, we release an episode that's like an hour and a half long, I, I get to watch it like 15, 20 minute chunks, you know, pick it up, and have to then have to go do something else or turn on Sesame Street. So I'm working my way through that, and I'm like, that is what I wanted. Like she's talking about the pattern, she's talking about like things she likes. So I'm excited and I'm hoping to you know, maybe if I get a better, become a better sewer, I'll be able to have a whole dedicated extra episode to that. But um, I'll just show what I got. You know, this is, you know, four, four blocks. <laughs> uh, they're not even full on blocks because, you know, you're supposed to sew on the triangles, trim the dog ears, and then sew the other ones, and then they become squares. And I'm supposed to have 20 of these, so this is like nothing. But, you know, it's progress. And, like, I like to hold myself accountable because. You know, then if I don't show up, I'm hoping somebody will be like, hey, how's your quilt going? And I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to sit at my sewing machine and go burp, 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 and try and do it. I was trying to chain piece. I was feeling so confident, and then my bobbin tension was messed up. So, I, yeah, it, it, I'll get there. I'm going to be really damn proud of this quilt when it's done, and you will see it a lot once it's done. It's going to be done. So that's that, and then I'm just going to briefly talk about the books I've read. This is actually really funny because I just finished The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling and I want to say it was Cam, the stitcher, that brought it up. It was either Cam or Marjorie Maid. I, I talk, I've talked about them about books. I want to say it was Cam and either way, we had very similar thoughts. I'm like, it started off really strong, like, you know, haunted house magic, you know, creepy, you know, creepy vibes, kind of like a horror Jane Eyre, except there's not really, yeah, a horror Jane Eyre. And then it just flopped at the end, you know, like, either she needed a longer book or a shorter book. The threads were like, ooh, not help handled properly. I really, which is a shame, because I picked it up I, and I stuck through it because I really liked her first book, which was, oh gosh, I'll have to show it there, but uh, Into the Luminous Deep, I want to say, was her first book, which was like a you know, exploring a deep, um, in another planet, exploring, like, one of those, something like Mariana's Trench style, you know, so of course, like, deep sea, creepy vibes, and, yeah, really like that one, it, it, it kind of gave me, like, Martian, Martian vibes, if the Martian would like less humor, more, more, more horror, so I read that, um, I read, oh, I'm gonna butcher the name, because I do terrible, 
um, Clytemnestra? I've never... See, this is a problem. I, I never actually heard it pronounced in real life. Um, you know, the sister of Helen or Troy. I actually really liked that one. It, you know, it's, it wasn't fresh and, like, you know, did anything new to the myth, but it was a really sympathetic, tell, you know, life of the character, you know, of the character, because we all know her, you know, she murders her husband after he comes back from Troy with Hel uh, Cassandra, and, you know, because he murdered their daughter to get to Troy. And that's all I have ever really known. You know, she was like Helen's twin, you know, the less pretty twin. Well, and so it was really interesting just to have a Troy retelling that was not set in Troy, was not focused on any of those characters, and instead, like, what happened leading up to and before then. I really enjoyed it. it like, I, I struggle with Greek mythology because there's so many retellings right now. This was a solid one. I, I really enjoyed it. She's not, not she's, she's not, she's an anti-hero in some ways. Like, you can understand what drove her to not be the most, she, she's not sweet, she's not, you know, she's a very hard woman. And it's interesting to read characters that are not, you know, perfect and good and make smart decisions. So she was, that was good. Um, read some other books I wasn't really excited about, so I won't really talk about them. I did read the latest uh, encrypted novel in the Sean, Sean and McGuire's encrypted series. I really recommend the first like four or five books in that series. Um, she's a fantastic writer. She has like, God, you know, you can tell all her book series are going to be like 20 books long, which I love. However, like you get this, you know, each book and like she has like an overarching plot point that she's working towards, right? Which is fantastic. I love it. It's just like sometimes you get to like the middle, you know, or like the midpoint, right? And it's like, okay, this is great. Let's move on to like, you know, we've, we've hit our mid, you know, mid season, you know, part, part. Let's move on to the series finale. Like, so the action's kind of dropped down. It's fine. You know, I think a, a couple of her last books have been condensed into one book and some plot points cut or rearranged, but it's still interesting. It's still good. I, I like visiting that world. It's comfort. So like I said, I would just read the first five. And if you really like, like those and her style, like, you know, keep going. Like it, it, it's good. It's just like, I, this isn't, you know, the one I would recommend because it's like the 13th, 14th in the series. And there's also a whole bunch of novellas and like short stories, but I love it. Like I love, I love her world. I love her world building. I love her humor. So I will always recommend Sean and McGuire. I would just n recommend the first book in the series, not like the 14th, but it was still good. So yeah, those are my plans, which are basically like, thanks for joining. I will try and do an update. Um, middle of the month, like, you know, two weeks from now will be Mother's Day and my birthday. So probably maybe before that, maybe after that, I will hopefully have lots of starts and progress to show you. And, you know, maybe I'll have six of these rather than four of these. Like, you know, thanks for everyone for coming in and watching. Uh, Thanks for listening to my rambling and, you know, just again, thanks for watching and, you know, leave a comment. I love interacting or come check me out on Instagram. I post a lot and I talk a lot. So yeah, uh, that, that's that. So I'll see y'all on the other side. Bye.